can leaning become a sportswear heavyweight? Welcome to the Valuation Masterclass case study where you'll learn about interesting stocks and how to value them. What's interesting about Li Ning is that its net profit in 2021 rose by 136%. This is Andrew Stotts of the Valuation Masterclass case study. Let's get started. Remember, this information is for learning purposes only. This is not investment advice or a recommendation. So Li Ning is in the consumer discretionary uh, sector. It's among China's leading and fastest growing sports brand. There's three things to know about this company. First, it's riding the Chinese e-commerce wave to drive top line growth. Efficient inventory management results in margin expansion and strong cash flow is proof that investments are fruitful. Let's look at some key statistics. There's 39 co analysts covering the company and in Hong Kong dollars where it's listed, it's got an upside. They have an upside of 34%. That's a PE ratio right now of about 40 times. And that's a price to book ratio of 7.6. Pretty expensive. My estimate, well, Hong Kong dollars 60. That's a downside of 10%. You could say it's a hold or maybe if you got more aggressive, a sell, but probably not a buy. So there's been a surge in domestic rejection of Western brands in Thailand, in China. Here's an article, how nationalism in China has dethroned Nikes and Adidas. Data shows sustained consumer pivot away from Western brands. This is an article written by Jinshan Hong, Ya Sufumi Saito, and Adrian Lung. Public pressure has been mounting on Western brands to stop sourcing cotton from China's Western re region of Xinjiang due to concerns of forced labor. H&M, Nike, and Adidas bowed to this pressure and stopped buying cotton from the region. China fired back by removing Western brands from major e-commerce platforms and social media. Also, Chinese consumers started to boycott these brands. Now, there was a mass boycott of foreign brands, which constituted a catalyst for Li Ning. With the start of that boycott, the share price of Li Ning doubled, and Chinese people perceived the allegations as an offense. The hashtag I support Xinjiang Cotton has more than 1.8 million views on Chinese platform Weibo. So the rise in the share price was followed by a big drop. Li Ning faced a couple of events that led to a quick drop in its share price. First, the Chinese zero COVID policy. Second, supply chains issues due to the outbreak of the Russian war. And number three, foreign funds start to digest, divest shares due to concerns of violation of human rights. This happened at the beginning of this year. Norway's sovereign wealth fund excludes Li Ning from investment citing human rights violations. A political war between the West and China is, of course, what's happening these days. Po politicians decide which consumer electronics we can buy, the social media platforms we use, and now the brands of sports apparel we can wear. Let's look at the revenue of this company. 52% comes from apparel, 42% from footwear, and equipment and accessories are the remainder. It's 99% of its revenue is in China. So what's the story? Well, riding the Chinese e-commerce wave to drive top line growth, Li Ning started selling its products online in 2014, which is at the time, which at the time made up about 5% of revenue. But as of 2021, the contribution of e-commerce has risen to almost 30%. That is rocking. China is expected to be the first country that generates more sales from online than in physical stores in 2022. As a comparison, in the West, e-commerce accounts for only 10 to 20% of retail. Let's look at efficient management, uh, inventory management, and how that's impacting the margin. Li Ning has consistently improved its inventory management. As a result, it has a higher turnover on its inventory with a lower share of older and outdated products. This has led to a massive margin expansion over time. Between 2017 and 2021, gross margin expanded by six percentage points. And anyone who's running a business knows that is damn hard. 
what we can see here is that the percentage of inventory that's constituted of six months or less uh, is now the largest part instead of uh, other parts such as seven to 12 months or over 12 months. So inventory management and inventory composition has really improved. Strong cash flow is proof that investments are fruitful. To lay the foundation for future growth, CapEx requirements are consist constantly rising. And at the same time, leaning is generating strong cash flows that can easily cover investments and also growing dividends. This chart shows the operating cash flow at Chinese yuan, about six to seven billion Chinese yuan. Let's look at the forecast. What we can see is consensus is bullish. As I said, there's 39 analysts, the upside's 34%. All analysts are bullish except one courageous analyst who is issuing a strong sell. Analysts predict revenue to continue seeing a strong rally and gross margin to stay high. Let's go through the PL and the balance sheet a little bit to understand more. Gross profit growth is driven by strong revenue growth and efficient inventory management. In the balance sheet on the asset side, to realize its growth potential, the company must continue allocating a high budget to CapEx. And on the liability side, Leadning has a low level of leverage in its net cash. The company has a negative cash conversion cycle as it has strong bargaining power over its suppliers. So if you want to learn how to value companies like this, join my six-week online valuation masterclass bootcamp. You'll learn practical valuation skills, access my tools, join a group of inspiring financial professionals and get a job through my network of financial industry leaders. The next boot camps, July 25th. That's in fact, Monday coming up. After that, we've got October 10th in this year of 2022 and January 9th in the year of 2023. Join for just 797 scanning that QR code or go to valuationmasterclass.com slash bootcamp. Let's look at the valuation. We have a A. Stotts investment research stock picking checklist. It was inspired by Peter Lynch's book, One Up on Wall Street, where he talked about 10 baggers, meaning stocks that go up by 10 times. We did extensive research on 10 baggers and found nine factors that drive long-term share price performance. So let's look at these and ask the question, can this company leaning be a 10 bagger? What do you think? Well, first let's start off with management that is committed to growth. This is pretty good. Over the past nine years, revenue grew at a CAGR of nine of 16%. Keeping in mind that the average growth rate of revenue around the world over the last 20 years has been 6%. So that's pretty damn good. Number two, growth hits digit double digits. Good. Given the rising support for domestic brands, double digit growth is possible. Number three, gross margin can remain high. They have been consistently increasing it over time. Number four, earnings are predictable. Well, there are some fluctuating exceptional items, so I'll score this as moderate. Number five, efficient at deploying assets. Asset turnover, this is moderate. Asset turnover could fall as a result of rising investment requirements. Number six, cash conversion cycle is low. This is good. In fact, cash conversion cycle is negative, so it's super good. Number seven, cash flow is consistently positive. This is good. Leaning's operating cash flow is strong and consistently rising. Number eight, capital is readily available. That's good. The company is net cash. And number nine, valuation is reasonable. This is weak because, well, okay, it's pretty expensive. It's trading on high PE and price to book. So can it be a 10 bagger? I would say it has the potential to be a five bagger, maybe not a 10, only driven mainly because of the valuation being a bit high right now. So let's look at the free cash flow. The company expects strong cash flow generation despite rising CapEx. We're forecasting a lot of CapEx. In fact, so much CapEx in 2022 and 2023 that it depresses the overall free cash flow of the firm. Let's look at the estimate of value. Leaning has strong revenue potential. However, I think the consensus might be slightly too optimistic with regards to margins. So I value the company using the free cash flow of the firm method with a terminal growth rate of 4%. I've got a cost of equity of 8% because it doesn't have any debt. The weighted average cost of capital is about the same. So my conclusion, 
My base case downside of 10%, bull case is downside of 1%, and the bear case is a downside of 16. So it's not that much of a wide margin in that case. What are the risks? Well, the key risk is geopolitical conflicts. The geopolitical situation may hinder the company's international expansion. Sanctions by Western governments could prevent investors from investing in the company and failure to protect its own intellectual properties. Conclusion. Well, Chinese booming e-commerce to unlock double-digit growth for Li Ning. Efficient inventory management drives margin expansion. That was an impressive part of what this company's been doing. And strong cash generation supports a defensive balance sheet. So let me ask you, the question, can leaning become a sportswear heavyweight? Let me know your answers in the chat below and have another amazing day.